Good evening. This is part 25.1. I've got my new computer set up. I'm waiting to do my Vita course. People think, oh, she's all upset. She's damaged and, and all this. Not at all. I I had stomach indigestion. I had to have eye surgery. I have a lazy right eye. They lasered some skin off of it, off of the, the lens. And then a few days, a week or so later, I had my left eye done which is my good eye, you know, I mean, it's, you know, it was a good eye. So anyway, I have the new lens in. So I started thinking about the missing girls of 1974 because there were five little girls that went missing. We had a weirdo called John Paul Knowles. They said he looked like a blonde Elvis. Most of the children, not every single one, I don't know about the last one, but the first three I think you can lay at the hands of John Paul Knowles because he was from the north side. I think he'd been hit on the head. There was something wrong with him. And he went on a, a sort of a Kusanin kind of uh, spree killing across the country after that. And then everybody, uh, police officer Jansen. Yeah, Jansen. I thought it was Dancy, cause it was, but it's Sergeant Jansen homicide here in Jacksonville said, well, you know, we've looked into Bundy <clears throat> because there's so many weird circumstances. Well, if you go back to 67, he was in a bright red Volkswagen at Jeb Stewart with me and my co-writer. Oh, my God, next door neighbor. The woman went, she went ballistic. They told her, you can just stop notifications if you don't like this post. But before it was done, I got three hits, as mentioned in uh, Ted Bundy Part 25. Three hits. And the roller derm is so significant. I'm pretty much done with it, but he knew Jacksonville. But let me get on to this, because uh, police are the way police are back in the day. Okay, September 18th or 19th, 74, Ted flies on an airplane back to Seattle to pick up some furniture and drives back in a truck that he purchased with his brother, Glenn. Ted Bundy being 28 at that time, his brother being our age, 20. I'm sure there were some familiar uh, looks. I mean, he could have looked somewhat like his brother. A 20 can pass for a little bit older. A 28 can pass for a little younger. Okay. <clears throat> uh, uh, abductions were not occurring. Okay, the 20th, he meets a new girlfriend in his new building. He's in a new building. He meets a girl that he's going to probably date some. And she falls in love with him, and her name is Christine Mangum. Her father was a Utah Supreme Court judge, I guess. Um she probably has a vehicle, and she's probably going to college. That was 20th. Now, this this could be the record of the phone calls that you don't get. On the 23rd, he buys gas, all right? He's talking to his brother. His brother Glenn is 20. He's 28. His brother's going to stay with him for two weeks, let's say, from the 19th to uh, October 2nd, or somewhere in that ballpark, um, somewhere in there. So on the 25th, he telephones Liz back. Uh, home. That's fine. That's that's that might be his last day in Salt Lake City. Um, he's a thief, and he knows credit cards, and he knows ID. He probably has two IDs for himself. He tells Glenn, "Look, I want you to buy gas a couple days. I'm going out of town. I have some important duties back in Seattle. Whatever he tells him, he gaslighted him." And Glenn said, "You're in a new city. You're not going to college yet. You're not in the military yet." You can have two weeks in a new city. You're back from Seattle, which was pine trees and mountains. And now you're out in uh, Utah, which is red buttes and a different type of hills and a different kind of environment. It's something to see. Ancient historical buildings and, and, and you know, the cathedrals and everything. So the brother's going to spend two weeks in his apartment. Now, Ted tells him, use my card. If and, and he says, I want you to buy gas a couple times, please, because I think there's a gas leak or something's going on with it. It seems to evaporate. I can't help it. I just want you to fill it up a couple times, okay? And say, I'm going to call you, but I'm going to call you through Christine's phone, because my phone isn't really established yet. Uh, if I call you, I'll call her, and she'll come get you, okay? And he calls and said, remember to get the gas, okay? So then... Uh, September 26th, Ted buys uh, gas and Murray, but we don't know if that's him or the brother. Then on the 27th, he buys gas. We don't know if that's him or his brother. In the meantime, it's seven hours, five or six, five to seven hours to fly back to Jacksonville. I know, I know it sounds wild, but now listen to the story. He flies in because he's doing wild stuff. He'd already done like Sammamish just a couple months before. Now he's moved his whole kit and caboodle over to Salt Lake City. 
So he's on a string of really bizarre activity. The two women of Salt Lake City, and he's changed his whole lifestyle and moved across country, and his brother's with him right now. His brother's apparently in the apartment. If he stayed two weeks, it would take it right up to the end of September, October. So he says, you know, I'm, I'm flying. I've got this military guy's ID. It's not mine. I've got his credit card. I've used it once. Hell, Glenn didn't know. I flew back on a stolen card. Because where did he get the money? He had no money. He ain't working. He's all the way across country. Liz gave him some, but he's got a little money from somewhere. He, he stole somebody's ID. He goes and he flies somehow to Jacksonville International Airport from Salt Lake City International Airport. He arrives, uh, I don't know, 27, 28. The girl in Jacksonville goes missing on the 29th, I believe. Maybe it's 28. But I'm saying he could have left. Twenty. He could have left after that phone call to Liz. And just told his brother, be sure to fill the car up. And and the brother, being an honest person, he does it twice, but he doesn't like it. He said, no, I, just, I don't feel comfortable doing this. But he does it twice while his brother's out of town. You know, he's he's driving around a little bit. He's 20 years old. He, he's going to see a new city. He's a young guy. He's driving his brother's uh, tan Volkswagen around a little bit. And he did it twice, but he didn't like it. And his brother says, if they don't take the credit card, just uh, here's $15, here's $10, pay cash. You know, if they don't take it, say, I'm sorry, my brother told me, I'll just pay cash and just move on. But he uses a credit card twice, but the guy don't like it. So whatever else he does, he's just using cash because he's a decent person. He doesn't like doing something that's a little bit shady, but he knows his brother sometimes does stuff that's shady. Anyway, so Ted Bunny's up on the north side. Jacksonville, Florida. Avis Hertz are, it's 1974. They're operational. They're fully in, impacted now near the airport. He rents a Volkswagen. A little girl named uh, Himes, I'm sorry, uh, Virginia Helms, or G Virginia Himes goes missing on North. She went to buy soap or something, and she's gone missing. She's gone. Several others are gone during the summer, but she's gone, let's call it September 28th. And then a couple on, he's on New Kings Road, which drives up to Nash and, uh State Forest. <clears throat> State Forest is up there, and they see this guy on the side of the road in a bright red Volkswagen. So this couple says, oh, he must be stranded or something. Something's wrong. And they went up to the car, and there was a little girl who looked like Virginia Hames, who's gone missing. Virginia Himes, I guess. And she's dazed, and she's a little girl. She's on the floorboard, like she, she's trying to get up, but she can't get up for some reason. And her eyes are dilated, and she just doesn't look right. And as they walk up to ask the man if he needs assistance, he drops a bag, a, a duffel bag, a, a par, a, like a, a like a sports bag of some kind. And he just tears out of there. I don't know if we still have that. I'd love to know what's in that duffel bag. But he he goes on out of there. He, he doesn't stay to see what the questions are. He just goes. She ends up missing. They find her on the south side in a plot of land called Beachwood and Beach Boulevard, back in the wooded area. Uh, the plausibility, I don't know. She's dazed. I've looked up blunt force trauma. Sometimes you can't see it. Sometimes if it's hard enough, you'll see blood at the nose and eyes and ears, depending on what's broken inside the skull. It might take a while for that to occur, though. But if you've just been hit, it's just like a boxer hitting your head. You're going to have a, a wallop, a, a bru uh, what do you call that, a, a knot. You get a knot on your head, but you're dazed. You're kind of dazed. She, that's exactly the way the girl looks, but you can't see it. Obvious. When you're just looking down at the little girl in the back seat of the window, they said, and the, and the couple, it was a weird thing. It was a bright red Volkswagen. And so much of that fits his MO. He chooses a Volkswagen. He comes up from the airport, goes over to Main Street, sees a little girl walking. Right off the bat, he's found somebody within hours of landing. He only stays, he probably had an agenda here because he had other acquaintances here. Then he just flies on back to Salt Lake City, and then, you know, and he would have done it on stolen stuff because that's what he was. Like that other policeman said, the other police lady said he was a thief, and that's what he was. And it is it is possible. But see, the normal police say, no, because he uses, he, here's the Chevron thing. He bought gas here, and he bought gas here. The next question would be, and then he said, well, if he called from, uh, if he called his brother from Jacksonville, it would have been, no, because he wouldn't have called his brother from Jacksonville, because that probably wasn't established, he would have just called this girl Christine Mangum, who he ended up dating a little bit. He would have called her phone and said, go check on my brother. I need to talk to him. Please use that credit card a couple times. I think I have a gas leak. That's all I'm asking you. I want to see if I have a gas leak. So I, I, I'm doing an experiment. I want you to fill it up a couple times while I'm gone. So he's only gone 
one, two days, two, three days. He takes care of his business here. He kills a little girl. He goes back to the airport, turns in his vehicle as whoever he's pretending to be. Maybe some soldier's ID. Who knows? All right, got to go. But it's not impossible because the question would be, is who filled that? And it didn't have to be his brother, although his brother's there and he's flying around. He flew west, picked the stuff up, drove with an old truck, brought his brother back with him. It doesn't say how his brother, he meets this girl on the 20th. He's phoning somebody on the 25th. And then there's a couple gas purchases, but it doesn't mean it's him. And if he took off around the 27th or 26th, and he had somebody buy gas using his card with some gaslighting story about a gas leak, and he's testing it, and blah, I'm testing the vehicle, blah, blah, blah. He flies to Jack's, rents a vehicle, comes over to Main Street, which is right near the airport. He sees a little girl walking, and he gets closer in. He abducts her. He goes out on, um, what is it called? Ugh. New King's Road, almost to the county line, and a couple sees a car, bright red Volkswagen. They walk upon it, little girls in the back, dazed, dilated, and, and on the floorboards, tr- like she's trying to get up. He jumps in the car, takes off, and leaves a duffel bag. I wonder if it's still in evidence. All right, thank you. There's so many things. Look, I know there's family out there that had relations with him in Jacksonville, and I'm trying to help here. I'm not trying to cause trouble. I'm trying to help. But just because somebody bought gas doesn't mean it was a person who's on the card. All right, thank you.